Hello there. I'm glad you could join us again today. <sighs> Take a big stretch for me, everyone. We've been resting for a little bit, and it's time to wake up. We're super keen to tell you some more amazing science stories from the realm of genomics. But first, you might have noticed the time count on this episode, a little bit shorter than usual. So welcome to our very first Gene Shorts episode. Instead of the big, delicious episodes you're used to, these ones are bite-sized. And joining me today to wake up from our hibernation is someone who is just crawling out of bed right now, our very own producer from Down Under, Phoebe Melvin. How are you doing? How are things uh, down in Australia? Yeah, I'm good. It's it's early in the morning, but I'm excited to be talking with you this morning. I actually just rolled out of bed, but <laughs> I don't have any excuse to have done that because it is the middle of the day. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, what do you got for us today? Here you got a really fun story. Yeah, well, it is going to put a bit of a downer on what you've just said. Oh, but, no. Um, I mean, it can actually be dangerous to be sedentary, like to be lying down for a really long time. You might have heard about some of the things that it can do to your body there, and some researchers have made a really interesting discovery about blood clots that can form when people are stationary or, or sedentary for a really long time. Can you start off and tell us what blood clots are and why they're bad for our health? Yeah. So blood clots, when your blood clumps together, and it's really great if you're trying to heal a wound, but it's a big problem if you're not trying to heal a wound and the clot is just forming deep inside your veins. 10,000 people die every year just in Canada from uh, issues related to blood clots and, and deep vein thrombosis horrifying, but in the States, one person dies every six minutes from blood clot related issues. So blood clots, sometimes good if you're healing, mm -hmm. but also sometimes not. So where's this potential solution to dealing with blood clots? Yeah. So the solution might be found tucked away in the cold winter cave of brown bears. The great brown bear. Or grizzly bears as they're called in Canada. So let's dive in. Basically, some researchers decided that they wanted to have a look at the blood of hibernating brown bears, oh. trekked out into the middle of basically nowhere in Sweden, really remote area. Super cold, snows on the ground. They had to go out on skidoos oh, and it. they traveled out to where the bears were sleeping. They were able to find where they were because the bears were wearing GPS collars. Okay. So they then dug out the bears, which seems a bit unkind when they're sleeping. Very rude. Uh, obviously had to tranquilize them to make sure that the bears were safe and the people were safe. Uh, they took a blood sample, popped the bears back in their hole, tucked them back in, let them go back to sleep, <laughs> sent their bloods off for analysis. And then when the bears woke up again in the summertime, uh, they were able to track them again. This time, obviously, no skidoos. Went out in helicopters, found the bears, again, tranquilized them. Sorry, bears. Took a blood test then sent those bloods back to the laboratory and they were able to do comparisons between the winter hibernating blood and the summer alert walking around blood and see if there were any differences between the two samples. Okay, so they looked at their sleepy winter blood mm -hmm. and then they looked at their thriving summer, we're living our best lives blood mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what did they find? Right, so they were able to look at one really specific protein that's coded by the bear's genes. And the protein is called heat shock protein 47, um, which is shortened to HSP 47. It's a protein that sits on the surface of blood platelets and it's involved with blood clotting. And they could see that the levels of HSP 47 were significantly higher in the summer months when the bears were walking around, potentially getting injured, might need to be able to clot their blood in response to that and significantly lower when the bears were hibernating so that the blood was not as much at risk of, of forming blood clots. Okay. Bears, they can form blood clots. It definitely happens in summer months, but it just doesn't happen when they're sleeping. That's cool for bears. Mm -hmm. Do we see anything like that in people at all? Uh, yeah. So humans also have this protein in their bodies. But fascinatingly, people who have spinal cord injuries who are immobilized, which is, I guess, kind of like the same state that the bears are in when they're hibernating, their bodies aren't mobile. Their levels of HSP 47 are downregulated as well. 
bears walking around, people who are walking around and active, the HSP 47 level is significantly higher. Okay, so that's super interesting. What does it mean? What's the big uh, bear size picture? So to double check that this sort of happens in uh, people who are also going through temporary immobilization. So not people with spinal cord injuries, but people who need to be immobile for perhaps someone who's had an injury and needs to be in traction, somebody who has recently undergone surgery and needs to stay on bed rest. So they sort of recruited 10 people. This sounds like a killer job. They got 10 people to just lie down for 27 days and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Love it looked at their HSP 47 levels and yeah, over time, those protein levels in their blood dropped as well. And so this tells us that this is a naturally occurring process that when the body registers, I'm not moving, um, I don't need to be producing the same level of HSP 47, those levels drop over time. But researchers kind of want to know, can we speed that process up? Because at the moment, all medicine's sort of able to do for us is give us anticoagulants, so blood thinners, to stop the blood clots from forming, but that can create other problems. So instead of saying, let's treat the clots by preventing the clots using anticoagulants, which then leads to more problems, the researchers think that if we can intentionally alter the levels of this protein in people's blood, it might be really helpful for patients who have just undergone surgery who need to be stationary for a period of time. It could be people who are in traction after a broken limb. It might be somebody who's experienced uh, physical trauma. And interestingly, even people who are going to space, um, apparently astronauts are more at risk of developing blood clots. So this discovery could really help a lot of people making sure that their risk of developing blood clots isn't increased because of their circumstances. So maybe one day in the future, I'm, I'm trading in my compression socks from my flight to Australia for some kind of uh, mm-hmm. little device that's going to turn on my HSPs or my heat shock proteins. Exactly. Turn them down. Yeah, turn, turn that down. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Phoebe, for helping us kick off our very first Jean Shorts episode by pawing into an excellent little science story. Too right. Uh, it's been my absolute pleasure chatting with you, Kaylee, and I look forward to our next Jean Shorts episode. All right, we're going to be back at you with more Jean Short stories very soon. And hold on to your shorts, the Jean ones or Jean jackets or whatever, because season three is coming to you real soon. And if you're like a bear waking from hibernation yourself and want to claw into some excellent science content around bears, check out our first episode on season two of Nice Jeans, which we called Pizzlies, anyone? Until next time. (laughs) 